I think I'm the only non-billionaire that's doing this. I mean, you've, you've got Jeff, you've got Richard Branson, you've got Elon, and, and then you've got me. I mean, how is it that uh, a guy from the bottom of New Zealand that was once coined by Mick Jagger as the, the, the bumhole of the planet can launch stuff into orbit? How crazy is that? Peter Beck really likes rockets. Monopropellant and bipropellant liquid rocket engines, hybrids. The sheer challenge of the engineering, um, the problems that you have to solve, it's, it's kind of what gets me going. So much so that he started Rocket Lab, a small new space startup, often living in the shadow of the bigger companies like SpaceX. But Peter's mission is a little closer to home than Mars. With Rocket Lab, Peter aims to make launching rockets into orbit as common as picking up your mail. The most important thing that can be done in space right now is to make space a domain that everybody can access. We started on day one with a, an absolute clean sheet paper. And you know we wrote two requirements on that piece of paper and that was, must be launched really, really frequently and must be affordable. But the most important thing here is getting to orbit like a freight train, just getting to orbit so, so frequently that you can use um, space as a domain to build commercial infrastructure. So that's things like put an internet in space so that every square inch of the planet has internet. And you know that's, that's truly game changing for developing countries. Peter always knew he'd do this for a living one day, even when his guidance counselor disagreed. My parents were called into the school. You know, they, they believed that my aspirations for a career were totally ridiculous and unachievable, and that I should pursue a trade in, uh, in plumbing because I was quite good at my hands. Peter ignored this advice and instead built this, a rocket bike. I did about 100 miles an hour in, uh, in an eighth of a mile. It's an amazing feeling actually. It's an ever increasing acceleration. So where you point is where you go and you just hold on. Two decades later, Peter has a staff of over 200 and Rocket Lab is five launches away from being in the black. We, uh, we successfully completed all our test flights and we're now into full commercial operations. We're, we're trying to get to one, launch one a month this year and then next year we'll try and get to one every two weeks and then we'll keep doubling down on that. Rocket Lab's secret? Innovation. They were the first to replace aluminum with stronger and lighter materials like carbon fiber, as well as employ radical production techniques like 3D printing. We've got a factory full of rockets, and we started 3D printing engines when people were making bottle openers and cats prosthetics. Nowadays, if you look at all the startup space companies, they're all printing their rocket engines. And they have one more little secret, location. The great thing about New Zealand is it was a, it's a small island nation in the middle of nowhere. Now that launch site is the only private orbital launch site in the entire world, and it has more launch availability than America does as a country. You know, the biggest thing to be done in space is yet to even be thought of because nobody's had access to the domain to be able to experiment and innovate. We're just getting started. The definition of success for me is to receive a text message from one of my staff uh, saying, hope you enjoyed your lunch, Pete. By the way, another one launched, another one on the pad. If we can get to that point where launch is that commonplace, that uninteresting and that frequent, then the world that we all live in is a definitely an incredibly different place. Maybe a better place. I certainly hope a better place. <laughs> it would be a total fail if it's the worst place. <laughs>